I come to you today because we need each other. You need me, or rather, you need the process I represent, and I most certainly need you. I need you because right now, national governments are working towards a universal climate change agreement. And for that agreement to be effective, it needs the input of key stakeholders. And you need me, because an effective international climate change agreement opens the door not only to global reduction of emissions and increase in resilience, but to shorter term gains with direct quality of life benefits for residents in your cities. Economic opportunity, food and water security, lower energy costs, better access to energy, improved waste management, improved transportation, improved air quality. So I invite you to work together to show national governments that a strong international agreement that is vertically integrated with city and subnational policies and measures is in everyone's best interest. Yes, there are typically more layers of bureaucracy above cities than below, and yet cities, especially megacities, are unparalleled driving forces in national and global economics. So let me make three concrete suggestions on how we might collaborate. First, use the metrics of the global conversation. For example, as you improve transportation, Cities can set clean energy targets that are recognizable to the international process and monitor progress towards meeting those targets. That is why I'm excited about the recently released Climate Action Report of C40, which I have not read, not even the executive summary, but I will do so. Targets for greenhouse gas emission reduction, energy efficiency, renewables, shape local development in ways that resonate to national commitments in the international process, in particular those that reach transformative scale. Monitoring progress, setting baselines, and establishing inventories with high quality accounting and reporting bring city level gains to the national conversation. Most importantly, this puts cities in the position to benefit from the various incentives and financial mechanisms that are being constructed both inside and outside the climate convention for purposes of mitigation and adaptation. Second, cities can green their current finance, looking at value not just based on cost, but on low carbon and high resilience. For your procurement, that means supply chains of city services can become more resilient and less susceptible to market vulnerability. For your infrastructure, that changes the way value is calculated in designing, funding, and building projects. And for city government pension funds, that means investing in low carbon to ensure that climate change doesn't put incomes of retired emergency respondents and all other civil servants at risk. Third, cities can open the door to commercial funding and private investment. Lima is a very good example. Lima spent less than $1 million to attain domestic and international credit ratings, and then attracted $90 million in investment in a modernized transportation system that takes people and children to school and work quicker and with less emissions.